That was a tough session. So the legs nicely done this morning. It's, uh, it's just before Thursday lunchtime. So a bit of a change of plan this week. We were going to be filming a full body workout with a friend of mine, Chris, another coach who has just finished two photo shoots this year. So we were gonna film a full body workout together. We we're gonna go through some top tips for a few exercises. And then we were gonna to talk to Chris about his experience with the photo shoot diet, the day itself, what he's learned from it, how he found it, everything like that. But unfortunately, he's a little bit under the weather. So we're gonna save that for a future week. And we might even do a little bit of a physique update in the future week. So what I thought would be really cool to do instead today would be a quick video on how I got here. So my story, how I got into fitness in general and then how I fell into coaching and how I got to where I am today. I've spoken about this a little bit in the past on the channel and on various podcasts, but I wanted to really dive into it today because there's a lot of new faces to the channel recently, which is super, super cool. A lot of new faces to my page. So I wanted to actually dive into this a little bit more to give you a deep background into basically where I'm at and how I got to this place right now. So. I'm gonna head home, get a shower, get something to eat, and we're gonna dive straight into that. But first off, as I haven't even said it yet, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing good. As ever, do that YouTube thing, like, comment, subscribe on it. I'm gonna drive home and get a shower because I am well sweaty, and then we'll dive into the episode. <laughs> So I am back, showered, eaten, had a few calls. So it's time to go through how I got to here. So if we go all the way back to the start, my introduction to fitness was majorly influenced by two things. First off was my dad. So my dad was a bodybuilder when he was younger. He'd always been in and around the gym. You know, we'd grown up see him going to the gym and training three, four, five times a week. We'd even go with him sometimes and sit in the reception whilst he was training and then come back home with him. We'd been brought up around fitness, around training, around all these different things. And then the second reason was at the time I was playing rugby. I played rugby for about eight to 10 years. And when I first started within those first couple of years, I wanted to go to the gym to start improving my strength, improving my fitness to help improve my performance at rugby. So those were the two main things that drove me to go to the gym in the first place. But also beyond that, I just wasn't really happy with how I was looking. So I was a very active kid. I played rugby and went to training a few times a week. I did athletics. I would be out and about as much as I could, but I was a bit of a chubbier kid. Not a massive kid, but certainly chubbier than most of my friends and brothers and stuff like that. Enough for me to be aware of and feel like it was unfair when I knew I was doing more from an exercise point of view than friends potentially, who were just naturally a lot skinnier than me. So that was another big driver for me going to the gym in the first place. And I literally joined up a gym when I was about 12 years old. So I joined up the local leisure center, which was, you had to be 12 accompanied by an adult to get signed up to there. So I went down with my dad to that. We got an induction to there. And for the first couple of years, that was my training. Going down to the leisure center with either my dad or my brother, there was no structure, there was no planning. It was literally just show up, know we were going in with some sort of idea of, okay, today we're gonna to do chest and back or shoulders and arms. And we just did whatever we felt like doing. We weren't really keeping an eye on our progress or anything like that. It was just go in, show up, lift some weights, go home. And that was the case for the first two years at least. And then when I turned 15, I was then old enough to join the independent private gym that my dad was at that he'd been training at for literally like 20, 30 years. So as soon as I was 15, super excited, got an induction down at that gym and then things really started to change from then on because at 15 years old, I started to take it a little bit more seriously. I started to try and plan my sessions out a little bit more. I experimented with, with different training styles, with powerlifting training styles. I was suddenly around people that were much, much bigger than the people you got in the leisure center, people that were much more planned and structured with their training, people that had a goal for their training, whether it was strongman, powerlifting, bodybuilding, sports, whatever it was, there were loads of different people in this environment. 
that you then sort that I then sort of got to know and would have conversations with. So it really sort of opened my eyes at that age to all the different types of training and how that can be applied to different contexts. And then that continued for another two to three years until I went to university, still playing rugby throughout this entire time, which at the time my goal was to be a professional rugby player. That was like the dream for me, which I think was a dream from when I first started playing around 10 until about maybe 15, when I realized that that was never gonna happen. I wasn't good enough, I wasn't big enough, and I actually didn't love playing the sport like I thought I did. The thought of being a rugby player was much better than the actual reality of playing rugby for a living. So at around that age, I decided it probably wasn't gonna happen, but I didn't know what I was gonna do. And then from 15 to 18, it was really just a case of going through school, through sixth form, getting my A-levels. I didn't really have a plan until just before the deadlines for university, I was told about a course called strength and conditioning, which was essentially gym-based training for athletes and helping athletes with improving their performance, their strength capabilities, fitness capabilities, everything like that. And I thought, this is perfect. If I can't play rugby, if I can't be a professional rugby player, I can get a job helping train them in the gym. And during my first year there, I actually managed to put my name down and get onto some work placement at York City Football as an assistant strength and conditioning coach for their academy team. So I managed to get some hands-on experience there, working with some athletes, working with some young players, understanding the principles of strength and conditioning and some athlete-specific gym-based work. And then towards the end of that first year, we were told we'd have to do some work experience as part of a placement program and the stuff that I was currently doing York City wouldn't count. So over that summer when I was back home in Leeds, I got a job at the private gym, at the independent gym that I'd been training at since I was 15. I worked as much as I could through that summer, just getting as many hours in as I could, to be honest with you, just because I loved it. I met so many new people who were competing in bodybuilding, strongman, training for powerlifting. I got to see firsthand people's different approaches when it came to nutrition, how they structured their training for different sports and different goals. And I absolutely loved that time over the summer, so much so that during my second year, of university, whenever I came home, I would try and pick up as many shifts as I could in the gym. And that's pretty much what my second year looked like. I continued to be a part of the York City Football Club as an assistant strength and conditioning coach. And then I was also working in the gym whenever I was back home on top of my studies and everything like that. And that's exactly how my second year at university went. I was loving a degree. I was loving learning more all the way through to the end of my second year at university. And then from my third year, things started to change a little bit. So at this point, I was approached to go go to Wakefield Trinity, the rugby league team, and start helping with some strength and conditioning work with their scholarship team, which was fantastic because it was literally the role that I'd been wanting to get towards, which was a strength and conditioning based role within professional rugby league. So at this point, I was in my third year of uni. I was traveling back and forth. I was working in Wakefield. I was still working in the gym four to five days a week. And then I'd also completed at this point as part of my degree, my gym instructors and my personal training for qualifications. So I managed to get those under my belt within that third year of uni. And then then when that year came to an end, over that summer, I'd been invited to go on a rugby tour to Australia and New Zealand with a Yorkshire touring rugby team as their performance analyst. I'd been doing a little bit of work as a performance analyst over my last two years at uni with the Yorkshire County teams, which meant just basically putting GPS trackers on athletes, tracking their data, tracking how many meters they covered, how many tackles they made, tracking their performance in the games, who was performing well, who wasn't, filming the games, breaking that footage down, feeding it back to players in training sessions. And I was basically asked if I would be interested in doing this for a team during their tour of one week of Sydney, one week in Auckland and one week in Wellington, which I was never ever gonna say no to. So I spent three weeks over that summer after I'd finished my degree with a rugby team helping as working as their performance analyst. And I realized whilst I was out there that I literally had nothing to come back for in terms of I had no plan on what to do next. I'd finished my degree, I was working at Wakefield, I was working in the gym, but I didn't really have a long-term goal for what I wanted to do. And actually I'd started to realize that strength and conditioning maybe wasn't the direction that I was wanting to go in. So I remember being sat in a hotel room in Sydney on that first week and trying to figure out what I was gonna do when I was back. And I came to the realization that the one area that had not really been touched on in any real detail was nutrition. And that was an area that I was really, really, really interested by as much for my own physique change and my own physique progress than anything else. So I decided that it was something that I wanted to learn more about. And I enrolled whilst I was out there onto a master's degree in nutrition back home in Leeds. So I went out to 
Australia, New Zealand with no plan what I was going to do the following year and when I got back and came back having applied and being accepted into a master's program in nutrition that was going to be literally starting, I think it was about a month later, maybe three to four weeks later. So I got back from that, started my master's degree, which was nicely at home, which meant I could work at the gym a little bit more. I could start up personal training on the side to give myself a little bit extra money whilst I was doing my master's degree. So then whilst I was doing that master's, I started up my PT -ing. and the first name that I ever came up with for PT was actually name that I'd had sort of had in the locker for a while and it was Mesomorph PT because A, it was my surname and B, it fit quite nicely into that muscular body type that you used to get taught about when you're at school. But I quickly realized that no one really understood what it meant. Like people who were into fitness, into training and had that sort of background knowledge understood the reference and thought it was quite good because it was. But the majority of people, I just ended up explaining what it meant, why I'd named it that. And after a while, I got pretty bored of doing that. So I changed the brand. And if you know me, you know I've changed my brand in a few times the first time I changed my brand was actually to grasp fitness nutrition and this happened towards the end of my master's so during that year when I was doing my master's personal training started getting busier and busier and I started to realize that the strength and conditioning route that I was at with Wakefield wasn't the direction I was wanting to go in with a career. So I stopped the strength and conditioning role to be able to better focus on my master's and also get busy with personal training so that by the end of that year of doing my master's, I was working in the gym still and personal training as much as I could. And it stayed like that for a good couple of years. So over the next few years, I decided that I wanted to go on and do a PhD. I wanted to continue down the academia route but I wanted a year out just to basically work, earn some money, have a bit of time away from academia and reading and studying, and then go back to it. And we did that for a year. And then towards the end of that year, we actually, me and Sophie moved to York. And at that time, I was personal training in York. I was still personal training in Leeds. I was working at the Leeds gym and I was doing the odd shift here and there if they needed help at the York gym, but nothing that much under the brand name of Grasp Fitness Nutrition. And at this time, I actually started applying for PhD. So I think, one of the ones I applied for, which I ended up going through the whole process of, which is a crazy, crazy rigorous process, was for an exercise physiology and cardiology PhD. And I actually managed to get down to the final three candidates, which I was really pleased with because I didn't really want the position. I just wanted the experience of applying for one so that when a position came up that I wanted, I'd have that experience and know what to expect when it came to applying for that PhD. And then continued looking for other PhDs coming up. And then lockdown hit. Pretty much overnight, I had to either go completely online with what I was doing from a coaching point of view or find a new job altogether. And for me, it wasn't really an option to do anything else. I was fortunate that I already had a couple of online clients at this time. So I already had some things in place with how to work with people online. I transitioned all my one-to-one -one personal training clients onto online through lockdown. That is what I did. But during that period of time, things got really, really busy, which I was not expecting at all. And I actually started to realize that I really, really loved the online coaching side of things. I was seeing better results with clients. They were enjoying the process more than when they were having personal training. We were keeping better track of things. We were being more accountable to things. We had clearer targets on things and the results were getting better and better. And I was enjoying the job more and more. As lockdown went on and on and things got busier and busier, I started to lean towards the side of not actually wanting to go back and do a PhD, not actually wanting to go down the academia route and basically just seeing where I could take this online coaching business. And then around that time, towards the end of that lockdown, I rebranded again for what I thought would be the final time, which was to Jake Me's coaching. And I started working with Mike. Mike was an online coach who was helping me with my own physique development. I'd had three or four over the years. I'd done various photo shoots throughout all that time. I decided that I wanted that accountability again. So I got in touch with Mike and he started giving me some physique coaching and some business coaching as well because I knew I needed to get a little bit better with the business side of things on how to deliver a better service, of how to help people and get better results and also just help run a better and smoother business. So I started working with Mike from that point on and I was working with Mike and I still am to this day for about eight to 10 months when he then rang me up on a Sunday afternoon, which never ever happened. So I had no idea what was going on. And Mike basically offered me a role to come on board as part of the biceps and banter team and be a coach with those guys. And for me, to be honest with you at that time, it was a no brainer. I had a conversation with Sophie about it, but really I knew it was something I wanted to do. I'd spent the last few years in lockdown, working by myself in a spare room on a desk, talking to my screen and nobody else. And that was it. And it does get quite a lonely job at times. 
as good as the job is. So the thought of being able to have a team around me that I can chat to on a daily basis, bounce ideas off of, moving under this biceps and banner brand was probably the best decision that I've made over the past year or so. And that has got me to the point where I am now. It's very naturally just developed into this online coaching role with biceps and banter, working with as many guys as I can, getting people into photo shoot shape, helping people make a difference, genuinely loving my job and having a good time doing it. And that's it. That's how I went from wanting to be a rugby player to wanting to be an SNC coach to wanting to be a university lecturer to ending up as an online coach and actually thinking I've ended up exactly where I should have been. That is my full story of how I got to this point. There's so much going on this year that's going to be taking that even further with the photo shoots that I've got for myself coming up in November and all the different events we've got with clients that are coming up across the year, which I can't wait to document and show you guys. But that is it. That is how I got to this point doing what I do today. I hope you enjoyed this episode, this last minute change of the episode. And stick around because next week we have got a huge episode. I'm going to be getting together with Jake and we're going to take you through what a full day of recording looks like for us. So what the podcast recording looks like, what it's like to be in the studio. We're going to take you through a full workout together and give you some training tips whilst we do it. And we're going to have a little bit of a chat afterwards about how we're both like to diet, where we're currently at with our diets and maybe a little physique update as well so keep your eyes peeled for that one next week but until that hope you enjoyed this don't forget youtube stuff like comment subscribe and i will see you in the next video